Liftechooks.com has the juice. Yep, right knee again, right knee again, and now, now, boom. Now this is this is where I can get pretty impressed by him, because he went knee. He ended up in all fours position to eventually him catch his dart. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Fight Feedback. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, AKA Triple C. And on this episode of Fight Feedback, I'm, I'm gonna be going over the most controversial or one of the most controversial fighters in the UFC. That's right, I'm talking about Kevin Holland. How good is Kevin Holland? What are the areas of concentration that he needs to do in order for him to become a top contender? I am here to break him down. This episode wouldn't be possible without our sponsors. That's right, Lifted Trucks. You may be a short king like Triple C. You may be 5'4". You may need a stool to get something from the kitchen counter, but whatever that may be, guess what, guys? Lifted Truck has you covered. So you guys make sure to go to liftedtrucks.com and get your lift on. Guys, enough talk. Let's take it to the big screen. Okay, guys, so here we have it, the catchweight, Hamza Chimaya versus Kevin Holland. I was actually at this fight. So right now, this weight right here is actually a catchweight, 179.5, you know, to 178.5. Anyways, whatever, let's hit the play button. Yeah. Yeah, right away. This is what everybody's gonna try to do to Hamza. But then, but then, I mean, it, uh, uh, Kevin Holland did the right thing. He did a little spiral there, like doing everything that he could to not get taken down by a guy like Hamza against the cage. And you guys have to, you guys have to keep in mind too, a guy like Hamza, if he if he really wants to take them, looking for a takedown, like for him to struggle with a guy like Kevin for so long, like it was, it was. I mean, even though he did get the takedown, it's just that this is one area where I feel like Kevin Holland is going to really want to, uh, you know, work on, you know, good, good, uh, I don't know what you call it, freaking good, uh, good Gramby, kind of going back to his feet. But does, does Kevin Holland really understand more of like cage work? You see what I'm saying? Like right now, if I was in this position, I'd be scooting my butt back to the cage. And I tell you what, even though a guy like Hamza did take him down, he struggled, dude. Like, he struggled to take down Kevin Holland. Or maybe it's just in slow motion. But either way, this is this is one area where a guy like Kevin Holland had to be careful because fighters are just gonna try to take him there to make him fight his B side because he is crafty on his feet. But notice he's strambling. Actually, Kevin Holland is actually doing the right thing of just moving not letting Hamza, but then once he settled here, that's when I went no, no. Yep. And right there, the ability of getting up. Does a guy like Kevin Holland have that ability of getting to his feet? You know, staying in guard. When I start seeing guys do this against a guy that can freaking smash you up top, you might want to be careful, dude. So this is one area where I say, Kevin Holland, start to get better to get up on your feet. Looking for a triangle. But the scrambling, the scrambling for him was good. Look, he was able to get to his feet. But then again, what is what is it that what is it that Kevin Holland's actually doing to to literally stay up and then conquer the center and then and then win the distance game? Because right now, as of as of all of this, it was all Hamza Chemaev. What is it that he needs to do that's gonna be a little bit different? Can a Kevin Holland bring it up to his feet, find the cage, do a better job of actually getting up from bottom? Because right now, like I, like I said, guys, you, you have to respect those who have who have vicious ground and pound, and that's somebody like Hamza Chimaev. Yeah. So look. So notice even right here, but this this yeah Kevin Holland goes. He does his Granby to eventually gets, pretty much gets into position for the Dars for a guy like Hamza. And then Hamza, man, for two minutes, man, if Hamza wasn't to get this actual submission, he'd probably be screwed because you know what? Kevin Holland made him work. But that's, but the key is, is, 
you know, Hamza said, I mean, Hamza said what he was going to do. And if there's one deficiency that I would say against a bigger, stronger guy, this is the same reason why. Uh, and, and, and it's kudos to a guy like Kevin Holland. He went from 185 back down to 170 to take his better chances. Yeah, it took, it took, it took Hamza two minutes. Yep, and here we have it. I wanna say this was uh, a couple fights before. But anyways, I was actually, I wanna say I was at this fight. Yeah, I was at, this was in Jacksonville, Florida. You know, he's 30 to 30. God, at least the Wonder Boy's 39, man. Shit, he still wants, he still has, he said he still has 10 years in in the fight. Crazy. Anyhow, let's hit the play button. Yeah, we're talking about round two. Yup. Yeah, he's going out there. He'll just throw, man. Like Kevin Holland would just throw and he'll find. He'll go for broke. I will, I will give him that, man. Like he will commit. If he's gonna go, he's gonna go. With that jab right there, I think that right hand might have caught a guy like Steven Wonderboy off balance. He waited a little bit too much, but you know, showing diversity while throwing you know, uppercut, left hook. He's kind of afraid of Wonderboy striking a little bit. And now he's just chasing. Now it, it seems like, it seems like it seems like Kevin Holland pretty much kind of with Wonder Boy could just kind of want to turn it into a street fight. Beautiful right hand. Beautiful right hand. He went jab, right hand. It's something so as simple, but I, I want to say lean onto this fight. Wonder Boy was able to make adjustments where Kevin Holland in the first one, he had so much success. Steven Wonder Boy Thompson ended up uh, making those adjustments. Yep. And here we have it against uh, Pon uh, Santiago Ponsonibio. You know, this was, it almost seems like the UFC is really trying to stack up this dude with just, uh, with just nothing but strikers, man. And uh, I, for some reason, thought was Ponsonibio was gonna get the better of him. But it's crazy that he's 30 and six over a 23 and nine. I mean, this is a hell of a good fight. Let's hit the play button. Notice the reach advantage for Kevin, 81 inch reach, crazy. For a welterweight, yep. And right away, he will counter you. Notice as he kicks, he step into his own. His best punches are his straight punches. And right away countering, left hook. Yep, it's almost like he will take one to give one. Yep. Gotta be careful, you, you, you can only take so much of that. If Kevin Holland's gonna press, he's gonna have to press, and he's gonna have to press with, with, with bad intentions. Don't press and not do anything. Same reason why he got caught with those kicks. You can, you can only take so many of those. Boom. Yup, there it is again. Boom, nice kick. I mean, we wanna see more of that from Kevin Holland more of investing in that. He, here he has the hands. Maybe he needs to pepper it. He, he needs to, he needs to kind of smoke the hands a little bit, a little bit better. Bah, to the inside. Yup, yup, unorthodox. Off of somebody, off of somebody catching his legs. He did the same thing with Jacare. Look, boom. Off of somebody catching his legs defensively, look at that, it's like some Krav Maga stuff. Boom, he's, here he's stuck Ponsonibio. Literally a back fist. And then he's just throwing, he's not throwing your, your conventional stuff as we throw like this. Like Kevin Holland's using like the side of his fist. And luckily, as of right now, Ponsonibio got saved by the bell. And then round two comes about, kind of changes the game plan. Now he's using more of pressure. It's almost like he smells something. You know, he's a lot more comfortable. And again, guys, this is where Kevin Holland tends to have more success whenever it is that he's actually pressing. Boom. Yep, lifts the leg, pretty unorthodox. Like who does this and then all, all to set up punches. 
it's uh, you know people have their own styles and, and it, it just seems like a guy like Kevin Holland he's he's a freestyle fighter he freestyles on top of his feet so even for even for me as an analyst like it's hard for me to break him down but he but, but if you notice he had, he had already caught that left hook off that counter and I think that made him a little more courageous look it Ponsonibe is complaining can we get that again oh look he goes up to Uncle Dana. Right here. Bah. Yep. His left hook. His left hook, the way he lands it off of people moving back because of his 81 inch reach, that makes a guy like Kevin Holland dangerous. That's probably that's probably his best punch. Now there you go. It goes up. And this is what I'm kind of disappointed with Kevin. You know? He, he goes up, shakes, shake Uncle Dana's hand, but he forgets the one and only President Donald Trump. MAGA 2024, baby. <laughs> yep, and here we have it. I want to say this was his last fight. Is this his last fight, if I'm correct? Against Michael Chiesa. Michael Chiesa himself. Michael Chiesa himself predicted the daughters. Again, I'm still like 81 inch reach, 6'3", man, as a welterweight. That's crazy. Let's hit the play button. Yep. And then notice, notice right away how much his takedown defense has actually improved from, from the first time. From the first time, from, from, from when we first saw Kevin Holland from the Hamzad fight to him actually, you know, defending a guy who's wrestled before, who did collegiate style wrestling, Michael Chiesa, you know? Michael Chiesa goes in for the takedown and Kevin Holland strikes. And I think that's what makes him a little different is he won't defend you right away. He'll look for certain punches, but then this time around, you know, what held, what held him up was the cage. You know, was, that's what held Kevin Holland up in this fight. And then, and, then, and then in this position, he was able to get the reversal. So watch, he digs that underhook, he digs it, and then he pretty much swings him and gets uh, Michael Chiesa, you know, back paddling here. Yup. Yup, knees. Against wrestlers, once a wrestler doesn't get a takedown on you, it's always important for you to eventually start, uh, it's almost important for you to, to, to press him. To press him and get him back pedaling. But in this case, he ends up throwing a knee. Boom! Catches him. You know, whether you block it or not, that knee's gonna slice through them damn hands. Yup. Right knee again. Right knee again. And now, now, boom. Now, this is, this is where I can get pretty impressed by him. Because he went knee, he ended up in all fours position to eventually him catch his dart. Michael, Michael Chiesa predicted it. That wasn't me. But notice, knee, the dude goes down into all fours, and then bah. This, this is what you call chain fighting. Now the simple fact that he stayed in this all four, that's when he ended up sinking in his darts. And that was it, and that's all she wrote. And now guys, I would like to correct Kevin Holland. Let's go off with the three T's, the techniques, the tactics, and the threshold. Let's go. Where should I start off with a guy like Kevin Holland? You know what, I'm gonna have, have to start off. I gotta start off right here with this threshold. Because you know what? Kevin Holland does have it. He may not be so technical, he may not be so tactical, but he does have a little gas tank on him. So for that reason, I'll give, I'll give Kevin Holland a whopping 7.5. For the tactics. I think, uh, I think tactically, when you do have a deficiency with technique, that's, that typically tends to suffer, but he has been getting better. But there's still a lot of improvements for him to do. You know, I would love to see Kevin Holland maybe start attempting or actually getting takedowns. But as of now, for his tactics, because he's one dimensional with the technique and the tallest striking game, I gotta give him a six, man, you know? And I think the greatest, maybe, maybe, maybe technically, maybe his best position when it actually comes to striking the fact that he has been winning and he does have hands and he does have certain submissions, I would to say his technique. 
but it's more it's more it's more maybe on his feet and that's more we has a probability so i'm gonna have to give him another 7.5 i just can't i just can't put him in that eight mark i think there's just too many holes like it's hard man i'm not here to talk smack either kevin but this is an opportunity for you to get better so you, can you guys add that up for me man i'm terrible at math yeah 21 out of 30. in other words kevin holland has nine points to get up and actually get better so this isn't a scale based on maybe it is but <laughs> this is a scale based on the opportunities that you could get to actually get better you know and particularly your tactics and your technique i think your greatest i think your maybe your greatest asset right now is the fact that you will go you will fight and you'll fight to the end and uh and i appreciate that about a guy about a guy like kevin holland so there you have it guys you guys just watched this episode of fight feedback i'm your host henry cejudo aka triple c and again guys a big thank you to our sponsor that's right lifted trucks when you're when you're a short king like triple c a 5'4 king but maybe on the streets i'm a little bit taller that's right i'm 12 feet tall when it comes down to me getting that lifted truck so make sure to go liftedtrucks.com and get your lift on till next time i'm out